that's a booking, is it? Fourth, it's gonna be a long day, mate. What is, he's lost control. He's lost control. He's lost control. He's lost control after 20 minutes. <laughs> Dorking Wanderers are back in training a few days after that painful defeat in the final minutes against Chesterfield. While the players are picking themselves up ahead of the home match against Maidenhead, Mark and his coaches are using their extra time together to try and learn from what went wrong in Derbyshire. I don't know if any of you have watched the game back. Obviously, you would have seen the clips that Ross done, yeah? So you would have seen them sort of nudge the ball, that nudge the balls I spotted about that press especially on the <laughs> our left hand side. Yeah, play for you, Neil. Lights off as well. Jim, do you want to do lights? Lights. You won't be able to fucking do the lights. Yeah, he turns them all on. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I was obviously getting my barnet done Tuesday. I wanted to just uh, say a few words about Saturday. I thought Saturday, I think, Listen, you, you shouldn't over talk one game out of 46, but we're so far ahead of where we were last year. What you lot done Saturday, off the back of a nothing pre-season, where I've made loads of mistakes pre-season, putting on games on a Tuesday, diminishing our fucking time together on a Tuesday, Thursday morning, I've made loads of mistakes. So fucking, I thought that was unbelievable. You know, if, you talk, if, you're, if you're scoring that without the points, it's a fucking high eight or nine collective performance from you lot. Let's just literally focus on putting these to the sword and going home Saturday night with our first three points, right, okay? All right, boys? First of all, how's your head? Well, mate, I'm gonna look back at this one and say the one with the, uh, he's had his hair done. Obviously, we all know my hair was in the departure lounge, so um, I've got it fixed up. I've, uh, and uh, it's only a day old. So I'm probably the only guy that's ever had it done without anaesthetic, they said. They said, there's not many men out there, Mark, as strong as you. I said, well, no, there's no men as strong as me. So um, he, he said, you know, he thought I'd like a, a lion, basically. But yeah, all good, mate. So well, I can't wait to look like Kenny Sansom, Don King, that sort of level, Lazarus, Louis, our fucking fitness coach. I want to be running along like this. I want a fucking mane off the back. And if I don't get a mane, I'm going to take it back. <laughs> we, we didn't get anything out of that match. A, because we had a player that, that let the team down with bad decision making, and B, because the, F, the PGMOL created another rule that no one had an idea what was going on and played 23 minutes across 90 added time. But I'll say one thing, apart from those two things, all them Wanderers boys, them proper Wanderers lads that have been here a while and the boys that have come in, they weren't entitled to put in that performance. Where you're going to get joy Saturday is because Kuhl's playing and because they're not good pressers. So Kuhl, Kuhl will take his man in here, he'll drop off here and he'll get loads of space. So he'll be hitting them big balls all the time. Tony, everything all right today so far? Let me know if there's any problems. Come on, mate, I'm sore, mate. Fucking sore. Didn't have anaesthetic, mate, nothing. Swollen, mate. Do you know what he said to me? He said, I'll tell you what, bar Tony Cray, you're the biggest man I've met, he said. Get a nice three points Saturday, eh? Yeah. No, mate, if you're considering this, mate, you might want to think about the after bit. It is fucking hard. Yeah, mate, like, no sleep. Can't sleep on my back, front, or crown. So it's fucking like... <laughs> mate, honestly, it's fucking hard. It's hard. What were you thinking about the Chesterfield game? If you've got any common sense. Briggsy? You've got me thinking about. Yeah. That's what I was thinking anyway. Yeah. Well, turn up. Did you think your favourites or second favourites? Genuinely. What did you talk, talk to me? What did you think you were? Anyone? Well, anyone else? Just tell me what you, what you really don't say what you think I want to say. You fucking knew, you knew, you knew it was going to be a fucking tough task. So don't give these a mental fucking yard by not being switched on. And in the warm up, it all starts there, doesn't it? All starts there. If your teammates a bit more lackadaisical, we come out from three minutes late, you know, someone's getting a strapping because they didn't win the hurt, all that shit. But just remember what I said at the start. Last week, you was in the heads of a team that thought you could have your asses handed to you. And that's why you played 120%. You flip that and go at 
this lot are dying out on that. Because they, this team dying out on the fact that everyone plays them thinking they're going to fucking win. And then they turn up and start crunching people. So get yourselves in the game, okay, boys? Good luck. Do be proud. Get three points. After a short trip up the road from Mark's office, the Wanderers arrive at their opening home fixture against Maidenhead, one of the few clubs that, like Dorking, remained a part-time side in the National League. Last season, Wanderers took four out of six points against the Magpies, and this time their gaffer, Alan Devonshire, will be looking to turn his particular brand of football into an away win, having only picked up a point at home to AFC Fylde a week earlier. Dorking, in the meantime, will be relying on a mark-free coaching team to figure out how to keep the three points in Surrey. And that means they've got no target. Who's playing out here? Some fight, um, small winger. But he's, oh, he's, not, he's, not he's out, quick and nimble, though, apparently. Yeah, but they, but they, yeah, but they haven't got, yeah. Oh, yeah. How are they going to play off? Well, as long as we win our first we got the team? Five foot seven, Who quite agile, it? nimble. Mitchell Lawson? Yeah. Never heard of him. I'm a little bit more optimistic than I would have been when I talked to you in April, to be honest. Um, I'm only talking maybe 15, but I'm not sure about bottom five, but we'll, we'll see. But I'm, I think it's just got a little bit more experience this season with a solid keeper. We had a lot of injuries towards the end of the season. We're a part-time team, it's a long season. The others were putting the performances in. We lost some games we should have won, you know, and, and ultimately we found ourselves in that relegation battle. And that's, you know, when you get down there, you're always fighting for your life, aren't you? It's never easy then. Last year was a very close run thing in the end. Um, I think when we came here in March, we were well beaten. And perhaps if we got a result that day, we could have opened up a bit of a gap on, on Dorking. We really struggled in the last uh, two or three months. Um, I think it was one win in 12 at the end. And, you know, get the excuses out. It was injuries, you know, that really hampered Dev. Um, I think for the last game at Gateshead, he had seven players out. And luckily, Torquay just maybe timed their run a little too late. So we were close to going last year. And are you building towards something else or is surviving at step one really what Maidenhead are about? Now you've asked a very politically charged question. So I can tell from the other <laughs> yeah. Just last week or the week before, been told by our local council they've decided against our stadium move. The Braywick ground move was with a view to having a, a sustainable club with like commercial facilities, a ground that would meet and football league standards and I think if we if we were looking at the Braywick move it would be to maybe get into league two. What was he like Alan Dempsey? Was he like was he was he I like mean, a rattler or was no, he No mate, he was like fucking messy mate. Yeah, he like fucking technical. Colonel, mate. He's played about 30 times for England mate. And he's got he's technical and he's fucking I know mate, he's doing this shit. I know mate. I don't know he sleeps at night. It, it, it hurts me inside. Weird. Weird, isn't it? Yeah. And then you got me who was like a big kick at, editing kick at centre half, who couldn't edit or kick it, and I'm like, fucking, let's get it down and play. <laughs> Weird. And he's like, fucking, he was like, end of his time, mate. He was like, he didn't, he didn't play as much for England as he did because people didn't really understand. What era? What era is it, England? 80s. What was that who we played? Like, jo um, like fucking John Barnes, Barnes then. Glenn Oddle, Waddle. Fucking hell. That's probably a little bit later, a bit before that time. Glenn Oddle, early, fuck early me. Early 80s, late 70s. Nobody ever attended a Maidenhead game because they love free-flowing, expansive football. The question today is, will Dorking be able to play their possession-based game? I used to live next door to a Will Dorking. <laughs> or will this, in fact, be a game of attrition? The other question is, will Mark be able to handle being locked in his own office? At one point, literally, because I didn't know the door handle was broken. The away side open proceedings on the attack with a free kick no less and you can expect to see a lot more of them in this match because this game will feature more stops than the 1932 Midmalosh organ. Good Stand up. Stand up for me. Stand up for me. Dorking are capable of repelling Maidenhead's advances with Aaron Cool looking to find the front men on the counter-attack. Go on Briggsy, join in! Go on Briggsy! Get a box, Jace. That's a shit ball, by the way. 
got a fucking foul. Just tell the boys stop away giving away silly fouls. Yeah, that yeah. should have been one there as well. It doesn't take too long for Wanderers to push Maidenhead back into their own third and test goalkeeper Craig Ross for the first time. Make sure we're sorting it, Briggs. Corner. Corner. Fucking it that hard enough, isn't he? Some loose play from Dorking then allows the visitors their own first chance. We're just beginning to realise that Harrison Mayo's superpower is winning one-on-one -on -one battles. Nah. We're not 100% sure that we know what happens next. Seb gets away with a hefty challenge before play gets stopped so that the two guys lying down on the floor can get attention. But neither one of them wants attention and somehow Tony Craig gets a yellow card. Fucking two of them down. Hi Baz! <laughs> Don't even want the fucking trainer! Terrible refereeing. Who's your book in time? Huh? Book in time. It's worth reminding ourselves before this clip that football is a contact sport and contact in of itself is not necessarily a foul. No ref! This oh, fucking man. ref, man! The official's propensity for giving free kicks and dishing out yellow cards is certainly not helping to improve the quality of the match. Nah. That's a fucking booking, is it? Fourth, it's going to be a long day, mate. What is? He's lost control. He's lost control. He's lost control. He's lost control after fucking 20 minutes. In keeping with the quality of football as a whole, Ryan Seager decides it's time to fire a shot at the Maidenhead goal. Back stick. Ah. Elsewhere, Dan Gallagher shows that righteous indignation can get a man out of all kinds of trouble. That's our fucking foul, oh, Wally. While knocking the ball around at the back, Tony Craig gets caught out and the visitors are in for the best opening of the match. Fucking hell, Tony. <laughs> fucking hell, mate. Jaden Mitchell Lawson tees up Sean Mikulski, but the striker can't quite get his contact right and the ball skews over the bar. Most boring half of football ever. Unusually for this time of year, <laughs> the clouds have cleared and the sun is drenching Meadowbank. And with the Wanderers playing into their own fans, there's a great deal of hope that maybe, just maybe, this is going to be a game of two halves. They didn't do one today, Mitch. They didn't do one today. Dawkins opening attack fizzles out, although we do finally get to witness a moment of true quality just a moment later. It is a moment that has the Dorking gaffer thinking that perhaps he shouldn't have released me from my playing contract. In our search for goal mouth action, this is as good as it gets. Let's go see what Mark's up to. Over on the left, Seb Bowerman's trying to kickstart the half, although Zico Asser wants to bring the tone back down again. Go on, Seb. That's a booking as well, Dan. Let's give it that way. In credit to Dorking, they are trying to keep the ball in play. And in credit to Maidenhead, they are trying to counter. At least they do when they're not breaking up the play with fouls. Kevin Locko steps in to nab Josh Taylor's pocket ball. And he sets Sean Mikulski on his way. Fuck off, mate. Mikulski gets in down the left channel and despite apparently being rather one-footed, he's able to open up and pass the ball into Harrison Mail's far post and give Maidenhead the lead. This the worst fucking team I've ever seen. Dorking Wanderers make an effort to take control of the game, but they're being hampered by their absolute inability to get anything right. And without Mark on the bench to scream some life into the players, this isn't going to get any better. My...
Fuck off, mate. If anything, things are going to get worse. Ross's microphone is broken, but it makes little difference. The coaching team are totally incapable of arresting their team's insipid performance. No, push Macaron. Jason's at, Jason, I'll push Macaron, yeah? When Tony Craig launches the ball centrally, Dorking finally makes some space in the box, briefly. Oh, Maka. Maka, go high with H, yeah? Harry, stay high! You're a Maka! Dino and co finally make some changes, sending on the withered old legs of ageing midfielder Neil McManus. Go on, H. Talk to him, Seb! Ref! Ref! He's off, mate. He's off. He's off. Good. Moments after making the changes, Zico Asser gets himself sent off. Now would be a good time to bring on Bobby Joe Taylor, a man well versed in the art of playing against ten men. Only McManus was the third and final change. Nice one, Neil. Fucking hell, Mitch. Fucking broke the phone. There's something deeply ironic about Maidenhead's shirt sponsoring this shot. We've known Mark White long enough to know that at this point, he would want his players to make the pitch as big as possible, spread the ball around and cross it relentlessly into the box. However, the coaching team have not spread that message and the Wanderers remain exactly as my Coca-Cola addicted granddad appeared to be, utterly toothless. Maka mate, Maka. Need something out of nothing here. We've never seen the bench looking so lifeless. Mikulski gets in behind and rather than take the ball to the corner, he wants to finish Wanderers off. Ashley Nathaniel George dances around before whacking it past Jeb Fuller and Mail, ending any demented hopes that Wanderers had of getting back into the game. Sit fucking shower, absolute shit that was. Good luck, mate. Well done, guys. Well done. Well done, guys. Good luck. Good luck. Well done, mate. Good luck. Well done, mate. Good luck, mate. As Maidenhead rejoice over what could be a crucial win, Dorking Wanderers will need to figure out what went wrong, with Southend United coming to town in just three days' time. Thanks for watching Bunch of Amateurs. If you'd like to support us, then hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and maybe leave a comment. If you want to support us even further, join us on the memberships program, and in return, we'll give you extended episodes and lots of behind the scenes stuff.